All right, there we go. Once again, it's me, the talking head. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's going to be a video 749. It is May 2nd, uh, 2021. And I wanted to make a quick video. My uh, beloved sons have uh, managed to knock over my makeup case once again. And so I'm my desk is just a mess. And I have found the uh, mandatory lipstick that every cross-dresser, trans woman, and uh, curious person buys when they get by. It's a uh, hooker red. I mean, it's just hooker red. You're like, it's my first case of lipstick or whatnot. I'm going to buy something I've always wanted. And you, ne you, know, you never wear it because it's just not, you know. Anyway. For beginners and amateurs only. No, I'm not I'm being a little facetious here. But uh, this video, I want to make a video. I had a bit of a, uh, of a very bad reaction uh, yesterday that a good friend was kind enough and very tactful enough to kind of say, simmer down now. <laughs> and whoa, you need to rethink this. And I appreciate that. But uh kind of what set it in motion is um about a week ago uh caitlin jenner decided to run for governor of california and uh for generations in the future and those who don't know uh she's very uh very visible very highly well-known uh trans woman from our time uh the 2020s the 20th 20th i want to say the 20 21st century, uh, but probably what I imagine, uh, not Rene Nusso, Russo, we're not Rene Nusso, Rene Richards. Thank you very much, memory bank. Uh, Rene Richards, if you do a little bit of search or if you, you know or you don't know, I guess I should say, uh, Rene Richards was a very controversial for her time trans woman. Uh, who prior to her transition was uh, just a hot item on the uh, uh, tennis circuit, you know, um, just dominated and was very just competitive. And when uh, Renee Richards transitioned, um, she continued to play tennis. And at the time, um, it just continued to be just a badass on the tennis court. And there were people at the time who said, you know, this is unfair. This is not right. It should not be this way. And um, Renee Richards was just, was just very much a hot rod, you know, just kind of in your face, you know, no, no, no apologies. No, as I understand it, no, no, no apologies. No, just I'm here to play tennis and I'm a woman. Let me play tennis. Uh, so anyway, um, for our century, I guess, for my generation, right? those of us in our you know, 40s and 50s, uh, recently, contemporarily, uh, I think many people in this current bracket might have, I know I did, kind of used uh, Caitlin's transition as somewhat of a, a litmus test. Uh, uh, I've made a video, I think, in the past about it, the, the week that she announced her intent to transition and pursue her life as Caitlyn Jenner. I just had so many um, run-ins with the word Jenner or Bruce. I mean, just so many just secondary things that uh, what Carl Jung, I believe, would call synchronicity. Uh, you know, things that as we're actively, you know, as we're in a, a frame of reference or a pursuit, we just notice these other things that begin to happen, you know, that might have always, always been there, you know, might have always been there, but we don't acknowledge them because we're not actively pursuing. I don't know. It's just one of those things. Like I said, he called it synchronicity. But in short, I think I was very motivated to, you know, kind of place my staff in the ground and say, I'm marking my territory, you know, you, you shall not pass, and uh, uh, made my kind of transition start, you know, and in many parts, 
she she kind of I was gonna say she inspired me, but it was kind of the you know I uh, I thought about transitioning for a long time, and there were people around me who you know while some of them were kind of aghast. Oh, can you believe? Did you hear? There was not this massive outcry of just consternation and at, at, you know admonishment of what she was doing. There was some impetus. And I was like, you know, maybe it's time I do the same. You know, if if they're not going to be, you know, people with pitchfork or pitchforks aren't going to come with torches and kill her, <laughs> maybe I, you know, I might as well try. So in some ways it was a bit of a um, seed starter, for lack of a better word. So... Um, about a week ago, she uh, she announced her candidacy, and she decided to run as a Republican, which at this time and, and whatnot is just kind of a weird choice, because it seems like um, you, the GOP leadership is very anti-trans. It does not mean to say every Republican is anti-trans. It does not mean to say Republicans are bad people. Or ignorant people or xenophobic or whatever we just in the current state maybe more so six months ago when President Trump was in office uh, than right now President Biden who's you know very proactive and just very aware that times have changed and that you know the idea of treating everybody the same with dignity and respect no matter their color their gender their sexual preference, where they identify on the gender spectrum. Okay. The, the gender bred man is, is dancing, the gender bred person, excuse me, is, is dancing with joy at just being able to exist and flourish under the Biden presidency so far, the first 100 days. So it was a bit of a kerfunkle that here you have someone who's so visible and so just in the contemporary limelight, for lack of a better word, to run as a Republican just doesn't make much sense. Now, as it turns out, uh, little did I know, okay, foolish person that I am, ignorant person that I am, I did not know um, Bruce Jenner's political stature that became Kate. Caitlyn Jenner's political stature and beliefs and that I can't, I, I didn't, I didn't care at the time. I didn't know I was ignorant. And, um, you know, since that it's kind of come to light and, um, you know, would I vote for her based on her political beliefs? No. Now that I know a little bit more about what they are. And it is very odd, like I said, that she would run on her as a Republican. Granted, I don't know California politics, uh, but again, this political party that at least for the last six or so years under President Trump was so anti-trans, it just doesn't make much sense. Uh, and my, uh, at best, my, my hopes for it was that she would do some change from the inside, you know, to say, hey, uh, you know, you're a Republican, I'm a Republican. You know, you like pizza, I like pizza. I'm a human just like you are. And I believe I'm a fiscal conservative and I want smaller government. I mean, all the things that are kind of the normally attributed to a Republican, you know, fiscal conservatism, uh, you know, smaller government, you know, a, kind of a hesitancy to raise taxes, blah, 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 blah. Um, you know, just someone to say, we're not all that different. You know, I just happen to transition and I'm a, a trans woman, you know, I'm, I'm not the boogie, I'm not the boogie, boogie man, I'm not the boogie woman, you know, that was really kind of my hope was that, you know, there'd be some change from within in some direction and, and, and maybe to, to take away some of the stig stigma, stigmata, the stigma of, of what being a trans person was, you know. Um, but over the weekend, yesterday, she 
made some sort of profession in her belief that trans women, trans girls should not be playing girls sports. And she said, because biological males should not be playing girls sports, which is, is so very wrong. I can't comprehend it because it is basically saying it invalidates trans women. You know, uh, we always hear this statement, trans women are women, trans women are women. It basically is admitting that trans women are men, biological men, which maybe we are. I don't know. I, hey, I've got the blueprints. Okay. You might have the blueprints in you and try as we might to uh, you know, change them with some Del Estrogen or whatever haircuts or let our hair grow out or, you know, things we do. Uh, we seem to be spending a large bulk of our time fighting how things were set. And uh, like I said, her statement just is like, I don't know, it's, it's a, it's a, like a Judas, you know, <laughs> Judas was right there next to Christ. You know, Judas was one of the followers of the disciple and ratted Christ out. He turned him in, right? Or uh, in the, the productions of Uncle Tom, not in Uncle Tom's Cabin, the book. If you've ever read Uncle Tom's Cabin, uh, as Harriet Beecher Stowe wrote it, Uncle Tom is actually a pretty noble character. Uh, he actually allowed it. He basically killed himself to protect um, some women. So he's not the Uncle Tom that our society has assigned to that role uh, as the the popularity of Uncle Tom. I mean, the Uncle Tom's Cabin, when it, when it was originally published, it outsold the Bible in terms of number of copies. People wanted to read it. And um, like I said, the character in the book is not the dramatization that it became in books, in movies and TV shows. Um, you know, where Uncle Tom was somewhat of a sellout. You know, again, the original text was changed to make it a little more marketable. And then obviously it became minstrel shows and that's where you get, you know, blackface and all. You, you get into a whole other thing about why it's so wrong and maybe why people have a, a bad reaction to it and why we, we oh, to be an Uncle Tom um, is to be a traitor, you know, is to be a sellout is to sacrifice maybe your beliefs or those around you um, to curry favor with a group of people, in this case, the whites, you know, whatnot. And so my first reaction, um, you know, is I said, you know, Uncle Bruce, you've lost all credibility. And in doing that, a couple things, um, you know, I discredited transitioning i discredited trans women uh using a dead name i mean so many things are, are wrong in that but there's just so much anger there's so much anger and i i think again because i held this person to such uh you know they were a a a, a beacon a light you know something on the shelf that inspired me to do something so monumental in my life and to have them come turn out to be such a, I don't want to say charlatan or, you know, there's just something that's just not right going on there, you know, to come out against trans youth and whatnot. Um, you know, it, it is very, it's like seeing one of your heroes just destroyed. You, you learn who they really are. and They're not who you thought they were. And um, so I guess that's my faux pas. And, you know, my first inclination was, you know, excommunication and you know, you're, you're not, you know, and, and that's, that's a danger. That's a danger. But I guess I wanted to share, you know, some of the, obviously this is my channel. It's my life. We want trans and middle age. Um, but I wanted to talk a little bit about kind of my reaction and some sense of betrayal. And obviously, um, you know, I, 
totally ignorant of what Caitlin believed. I, I haven't, I didn't watch a single episode of her reality show. Um, you know, again, I, I don't know, you know, she's a, a, I didn't know what she stood for. I didn't know what she believed in. That said, she is entitled to having her opinion. And the fact that she believes that uh, trans girls are really biological males who shouldn't be playing in sports does not invalidate her as a trans woman, does not invalidate her experience. Um, while I do think it does betray people <laughs> who need, who need a star, who need, you know, we need people to be uh, our heroes. We need people to, you know, people who have broken, broken the stereotypes. I know a lot of people like, uh, was it Christine Jorgensen for being, you know, the first trans you know, uh, awareness about transgender stuff. And, um, like I said, Renee Richards, a uh, very controversial figure of her time. You know, she is still a firecracker. If you have seen an interview with her, um, she make your head spin, you know, um, she's mellowed out with age, but, you know, again, I think we, we need those role models and, and we need, um, very sad. That's really hurt me. That she was still a shit. But, you know, I think about people like Laverne Cox, who's very, you know, she's in, she's in the limelight. You know, she, she emulates and has broken so many windows, so many ceilings, and things that were denied to her. We need those heroes. And maybe, uh, maybe it's up to us to be heroes for each other. Like my friend who pointed out to me. And other people that I've met on this journey. So that said, I'll end it here. Uh, like I said, I did not mean to disenfranchise anybody, but I think there is a bit of, I mean, again, you're entitled to your opinion, but I just can't imagine somebody who experienced firsthand the repression and the shame and the guilt the struggle, the pain, and the suffering that we go through and has it within their ability to alleviate that for the next generation. It's too late for us. We have already gone through hell and back, but we have the ability to make that less of a struggle for the people that are behind us, for the young kids, for the trans youth. And it blows my mind that she would force that on someone else to continue that on the trans youth. It just blows my mind. I mean, it's like, you know, and I guess in addition to that, you could say for her own political gain, you know, she is doing this for trying to appeal to a block of voters who up until this date and time have just been anti-trans. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, that's, I guess that's, like I said, that's kind of where the uncle Tom, uh, reference comes in, you know, for her own political gain. But, She's entitled to her opinion. Like I said, don't, you know, don't. It's not meant as a attack on trans people or trans women or anything. But uh, that was my knee jerk reaction was there's no way you're transgender. I mean, a, a full judgmental on my behalf 
wrong, 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 wrong. You know, wrong, error. Danger, Will Robinson, danger. Um, but that was kind of my, my take, you know. Um, and that's just not, it's not fair, it's not true. You, know, you can be dissenting, you can have whatever opinion you want and still be transgender or trans woman. And, uh, you know, kind of like I had said <laughs> before, maybe I've written many times, is I, I write mean people suck. That was a uh, sticker. Uh, there's a law firm I used to uh, intern for when I was in Atlanta, uh, help out as a clerk. And uh, in the file room, where we kept all of those cases, the files, um, there was a big sticker on the back of the door, you know, facing into the closet, basically, that said, I think it said all people suck or mean people suck or something. But, you know, it was just kind of funny that on the other side of the door, you know, you're, oh, how can I help you, whatever. And then in the, in the window, you're like, oh, my gosh, mean people suck, you know. Uh, but that's kind of been my thing is, you know, mean people suck. And, uh, man, hmm. You know, it's, it is, isn't it a shame that, you know, I wouldn't vote for her now, you know, and, and here's someone who could be such a great catalyst of change and, uh, you know, but hey, it's the way it goes. Uh, just because you're transgender doesn't mean you're likable. Or votable, I guess, you know, in the same way that just because you're a Republican doesn't mean you're an evil person, you know, seriously, it's, but, uh, I can't, like I said, I can't help but feel some, some betrayal, some betrayal here, and she doesn't know me, I don't know her, you know, I just happen to, you know, all the gears meshed at the right time, and it changed my life. So, anyway. All right, that's my thought, and I'll shut up, and uh, we'll go from there. Life will continue. I hope. I hope life will continue. All right, till next time. Good luck. Boop.